what issues or ideas hit the view that interaction with on the campaign that you found to be particularly effective for people who are more of left persuasion? Uh, it seems so like the question, the question was, which issues have I found to be very effective with left of center voters? Is that right? Yeah, which one? Well, certainly same-sex marriage is one. Um, the drug war is another. Is this, is this mostly, though, yeah, okay, I agree with you, but I can never vote for you because of X, or...? Well, the X is Cuccinelli. It's a fear of oh, Cuccinelli. So they'll vote for McAuliffe just to vote for Yeah, but, but that's an issue, that's, that's, a, that's an argument that we're, we're, you know, we're arguing against. I think that, uh, I, I think, I think that we're going to have more, uh, we're, we're actually doing fairly well. And I, the, the evidence, uh, there are a lot of, there are a lot of Cuccinelli voters who have seen polls where he's starting to fall behind by more, and they automatically assume it's due to me. But all, but the polls, the evidence from the polls suggests that that's not the case. The, the difference between the other two candidates is the same whether I'm in the poll or not. And the cross tabs on the Roanoke College poll show that, uh, you know, the, of the people who, who uh, I, a large portion of my vote comes from people who were just so turned off by the other two candidates that they would just would not vote at all. But of the people who probably would, it comes fairly evenly from the other two candidates. So, you know, I, I kind of chalk this up to another example of how the Republican base is sort of turning away from evidence-based <laughs> arguments. <laughs> but uh, maybe that's maybe that's a little too cute. But uh, but but I think that you know, once once their candidate they see their candidate uh, falling behind, they want to blame everything except the extremism of their own candidate. Well, you explain to everyone in here how these What's really going on? Seven <laughs> <laughs> percent for someone else. I remember yeah. that. Well, I, I mean, I, I can't really. The only thing is, I'm either in in the polls or not in the polls. Um, and so, for the ones that I'm not in, those numbers are not as reliable because you know people will get into the polls and see someone else. Uh, so I just I only focus on the ones I'm in, and that's that's pretty much it. You know, if, uh, when it comes to the ballots, if you're going to be rotated through in terms of position, because the no. very first person listed on the ballot has a 2.5 percentage yeah. point is advanced. Yeah, and it's a, uh, no. Right. Yeah. No, we don't. Well, there's actually a statute that privileges the Republicans and Democrats, and we came very close to filing a lawsuit to challenge it, but we didn't bother. Um, but basically, they they had a drawing where the to determine which of the major parties go first, and then it's them two, and then it's it's uh, non-major party candidates, and then it's independents. Speaking and, on uh, elections, that in 2004, the Democrats accused the Republicans of uh, stealing the vote. In 2012, uh, Obama stole the vote with the uh, University of Chicago-related Argonne National Laboratory determining that uh, for $28 easily available parts, an eighth grader could do a hacking device to change the output of an electronic voting machine, uh, the two major ones, from half a mile away. What are the libertarians trying to do to stop using electronic voting machines so return to paper votes so that we have a chance to have an honest election again? We're trying to win elections. <laughs> You're not going to win it with an electronic voting machine. Well, we're not going to change the electronic voting machines when we're just sitting here not trying to win elections. I mean, the fact of the matter is there's so many ways in which the deck is stacked against us. But, you know, that's the, that's the, that's the game in which we have to play. You but can only, you can, you can file lawsuits. You're only going to have standing in some of them. You're only going to win some of them. If you, speaking if you, out changes the agenda. Well, yeah, so if you speak speaking. out on it, I'm saying okay. you might have a yes. chance of yes, getting I'm against the fraud. Republicans and Democrats yes. to buy into the fact that we need paper votes. Where, aside from issues, where around the state do you think you are doing the best in terms of your voter appeal or organization to support you? And then secondly, what can most individual people, what, what is one or two or three most effective things that just an average supporter of yours can do to help you in the remaining six, seven weeks? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I would say it's, it's a lot of different places. I think that we have a very good following in Charlottesville where we have, we have several radio hosts who have us on regularly, and uh, we have a very strong 
contingent of volunteers in Roanoke and Lynchburg as well. Um, uh, Richmond, we have a pretty good base. Fredericksburg, a very active one. Tidewater, it's, it's active and growing. Here, as I was, I think you weren't here yet when, when I said this at the beginning, this is our first meet and greet, but we plan on being here a lot over the next, the final eight weeks to do a big push here. Um, and so I, I'm hoping that this will also be a major area where we make a lot of headway because there's a lot of people who, uh, you know, as everywhere, there's a lot, of, a lot of people who don't like either candidate, but even more than in other areas, I think, uh, you know, this area is even more unlikely to want to, uh, you know, stay within the two-party system and are, are, are open-minded about a third-party candidate. So uh, what can you do? Well, first of all, we're going to have more events and, you know, bring more people, but I'd say the first thing is word of mouth. What I tell people is, you know, choose a small number or even a big number and commit to telling that many people every single day about my campaign. Have a bunch of cards with you if you can, bumper stickers if, if they ask for it. Um, and we're gonna have door hangers probably next week, possibly the following one. And we'll be getting those out to everybody. Um, so, you know, if you're willing to go around neighborhoods, Northern Virginia is fairly uh, dense, so you can hit a lot of, a lot of doors quickly. Um, but th I think those are the two biggest things. Um, word of mouth and getting out there and uh, I don't know. John, John has probably has some ideas as well, but I think those are the biggest, the biggest things. Is, is just making sure that the more people are aware of me, the more people, the more people are just going to want to vote for me because it's a it's a fairly easy, easy sell once they hear there's a third person. So other th other things you can do is you know calling into radio shows and just saying you know uh, you know this is a great gubernatorial candidate. You should cover him. Things like that. Letters to the editor. All of those things help. Enormously. Just if I might just interrupt for a moment. How many in this room have actually called a radio station when they're covering a topic and given a libertarian perspective and then pointed out you know, a particular issue and somebody running in a race? Can anybody put their hands up and say that? Now think about this. It costs hundreds of dollars to take out an ad, but if you're on there and you make a concise point in front of people on the air, and then tie it into the campaign, and that there is a choice in Virginia, you've just saved four or five hundred dollars that we don't have to spend in the 30 seconds for being on the air. So this is a really big leverage thing. WMAL, every morning from 9 to 12, you can call the show. You can call the show that when it runs from 6 to 9, you get a different set of posts. You can get three or four hosts in the same day. You can be, you know, and then if, if they do call too much, change your name and change your city, okay, but at least get the message out, because the thing is, it costs an incredible amount of money, when I ran for office in New Jersey, I, I remember spending close to $2,000 to run all of these 30 second clips, but really at the end of the day, I got more traction by calling into the shows and giving my perspective and saying, I'm running for office, this is how I feel about this, and then you could be on for a backwards and forwards, even if it's for just 30 seconds. So this is a leveraging that we get to, to move mountains with. Because the problem is the media is not going to let you in. And you have to stand up and take, take this back. Call national shows. I, honest to God, I am on 30 radio shows in a week. And it is easy. Okay? Half of these hosts do not know anything about what they're talking about. I called up shows, you know, the gay show, talking about who's in, you know, what, what's going on in Virginia. I mentioned Rob Ronnie. You know, they make it seem like Terry's the only person running who's in charge of marriage equality. I remember somebody's talking about guns, I tie it into the fact about the drugs. But at least we're getting our message out there. This is Jason, I'll say Jason in D.C., or Mike in Arlington. But then when you get on the show, go, this is Jason the Libertarian, and this is what I think. And then people will start to associate, because we have a very hard time breaking through this barrier of what people think Libertarians are. So at least, you know, if you leave here with one thing, Get the phone numbers down and start calling these shows all the time. What would happen if, like, I make a phone call and then two people after me goes, "Hey, I agree with that Jason guy. Why aren't we hearing about this service person?" And then another person calls in two day, uh, two calls later and says, "Yeah, that person was making a really good point." It's the leverage. Remember, part a lot of the problem we have here is leveraging the fact that people think we're just a small group. 
when people start to feel there's more and more, it actually feeds upon itself. And then they'll come out of the shadows and go, you know what, I really am a libertarian, but I've been running in this Republican or Democratic paradigm for a long time. So if you need help on any of the phone numbers, I've got a ton in my phone here. I have like